Hey everybody, Lake Region Aquariums here today. I'm going to be talking about the African butterfly fish today. This is a really unique, cool fish that you don't see too, too often. Um, it's a really cool fish, uh, really closely related to the arowana. So I call it the mini arowana because uh, this is the closest thing I can get to a real arowana, my dream fish. So for now, this guy's going to do just fine. It's really cool. I mean, when you look at the look at a picture of an African butterfly fish and a picture of an arowana next to each other, it, they're pretty much they got a really they got a lot of very similar characteristics so um if you want a mini arowana definitely check out the african butterfly fish so i've been keeping this guy for a while now with a lot of good luck and a lot of lessons learned so some of the lessons i learned when i first brought him home is these guys hate flow so just hate like surface flow so um if you have like a really busy aquarium with like heavy duty filtration the water's moving everywhere this guy's gonna just he's not gonna do well he's gonna be really stressed out pretty much right from the get-go so he's not gonna like that uh you definitely want to create some dead zones which is what i did i moved my power heads adjusted everything in my aquarium to give some dead zones up in the top of the aquarium for him and he uh he definitely just chills out in those areas he resides there and that's kind of where he lurks and swims around kind of gracefully um, he's going to be at the top of your tank 98% of the time. Every now and again, he does these deep submarine dives like a sperm whale would. Uh, so I'm not really sure what that behavior means. Um, but it's very brief. He does it. I'm not sure what it means. So if anybody does know what it means, please let me know. Um, but I've only seen it probably once. Um, now this guy is a predator. So just the way he's built the way he looks the size of his freaking mouth is massive so uh you want to be careful of smaller fish i mean i it hasn't happened to me i haven't had any fish go missing or anything like that but i'm sure i'm sure out there someone has an african butterfly that snatches up fish plus during feeding time the size of his mouth when he goes after the food if a tiny fish gets in the way i mean i can definitely see an accident happening so you definitely want to be careful of that but he's not built to swim down and take down another fish. He's built to jump out of the water and get insects, which brings me to my next thing. These guys are super crazy at jumping. So in the wild, they like snatch little insects out of the air and off of little branches and stuff like that. So they will jump out of your aquarium big time. So you want to have a nice lid on there. You want to have every, every inch of that top of that aquarium covered up so he won't fly out. So uh, I'm always afraid when I'm feeding the fish. This guy, he, like, he's super aggressive when it comes to feeding. So when I lift the lid up, he swims right underneath. I'm afraid he's going to jump out and bite my eyeball or something every time. So you just want to be super careful because these guys can jump like six inches out of the water. Uh, so be careful of that. So when it comes to feeding these guys, you're going to want to do like more meaty foods and definitely floating foods. These guys aren't really going to, like I just said, they're not going to swim down and eat stuff. So they, they're designed to eat from the surface. So uh, anything that floats, like some of the freeze-dried stuff, that's the only time I make an exception for uh, freeze-dried stuff is for the African butterfly. Just because it's a lot more meatier for them and uh, it's not going to sink on them um so like blood worms brine shrimp's a big favorite for him so get his protein in there not so much a veg veggie eater but it's it's uh okay to get um you know some you know veggie pellets or something like that and I'm, I'm sure it's good for him but uh he's definitely a protein fan so this guy is sensitive when it comes to doing tank transfer. So when you get him from the store and you're bringing him home, you want to do a really slow acclimation for him. He's not going to do well if you do a quick, you know, 10 minute acclimation. This guy deserves like a nice 20 to 30 minute acclimation. You want to turn all your lights off. You want to do a really slow acclimation, turn the tank lights off, the room lights off, whatever you can do, put them in a black bucket or a black container while you're doing the acclimation. Um, he just doesn't do too well with faster acclimations. They're very sensitive when it comes to changes in uh, pH and salinity too. So if your salt level is uh, way different from the store, wherever you got it from, uh, he's, he's not going to have a good time. Uh, so maybe test out the water. I'd recommend testing out the water he came from just so you know what you're working with before you actually put him in the aquarium and he'll uh, have a better adjustment that way. Stress is the number one killer in pretty much every fish, so uh, that can really send this guy over the edge right, right uh, from the beginning. So be careful with that. Um, leave the lights off probably the day you put him in and uh, he should acclimate a lot better that way. It's just under less stress. So the African butterfly fish is really hard to sex. So it's really hard to tell the difference between the males and the females. I've seen the pictures online. Uh, and they have like the pictures of the differences. And I really don't see a difference too much. I mean, they're very minor. 
but uh, it's kind of like the Denison barb, so they're just really hard to sex. Um, but the lifespan on these guys, you're probably going to be looking at around five years, five, six years, maybe that, maybe more if you take real good care of them. Um, but lifespans are always a hit or a miss. I mean, you never really know. It really depends on the quality of the fish and uh, the quality of the fish's life. So uh, the lifespans are always a hit or miss. But on average, uh, you're probably going to see five years or so. Um, they're not going to get too big, too, so you can not actually keep these fish in relatively smaller tanks, like a 30-gallon or something like that. Uh, mine's currently in a 55, but 30 gallons would be totally fine. Just, again, you want to watch out for the flow in the aquarium. Um, but, yeah, they're not going to get huge, so you're probably going to see them around 5 inches, maybe. May probably more so 4 inches, but these guys are super cool, and I definitely would recommend grabbing them. They're a super fun fish to have, and I think you'll really like them. Um, it's a really good time to kind of study this fish and see what it's about. It's just so unique, and uh, the way it glides through the water so gracefully, it it's a really unique fish. You don't get this behavior out of other fish out there, so... Um, and plus, it's the, the poor man's arowana, kind of. But uh, these guys are expensive. Um, not, like, arowana expensive, but, I mean, if he goes flying out of your tank, you're going to be real upset. But um, definitely, uh, you know, check him out, though. And uh, I think you guys will really like him. But you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.